Um, that I can see there are no members of the public here. Am I correct? Uh, looks like Laura Baker from Valley CDC is here. Oh, Laura, but Laura is practically one of us. Hi, Laura. Welcome. Thank you for being here. And thank you to everybody else. Um, okay, so we need to approve the minutes, hopefully, from October 22nd. Um, oh, by the way, okay, so Hannah can't be here tonight, and Bev can't be here tonight. Uh, I think those were the only two. Melissa said, Melissa said you might not be able to, but you're obviously here. Okay, great. Okay, so I hope everybody read the minutes from, um, from October very carefully, and would anybody like to approve them? Make a motion. Richard? Second. Make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. I'll second. Okay. Uh, Carmen, can we just clarify that's for October 2nd, not October 22nd? Oh, October 2nd. Okay. okay minutes from October 2nd. All right. Uh, does anybody oppose approving the minutes? Okay. They've been approved. I have to abstain because I wasn't there. Okay. Okay, minutes have been approved. All right, Keith. Um, all right, announcement regarding affordable connectivity program. I think that's you, Keith. Yeah, so I, I shared this with um, other housing developers, um, but um, you know, this is just announcement. Um, so the state through the federal government has what's called the affordable connectivity program. And so if you are on Mass Health, you can get um, what the purpose is to broaden internet or broadband connectivity. Um, so if you are a Mass Health member, um, you can get a $30 discount for uh, internet. Um, and there are uh, like a one time discount for desktop computers and things like that. Um, so if you're interested, I can send you the information. But if you know anyone, or developers or people that need um, internet, uh, this is a way that the federal government and the state are trying to get people hooked up. Okay, thank you, Keith. So we have a, a fairly light agenda today. Um, the next thing on the agenda is discussing next steps for the Municipal Affordable Housing Trust Fund. Um, the subcommittee met the subcommittee wants to bring back to you a couple of ideas. Um, Hannah was uh, masterminding the subcommittee and took notes, but she can't be here tonight. So we'll need to recreate um, some of what we talked about. Um, Gordon and Edgar, you were there as well, right? Mm hmm Yep. And yeah, nobody else here. Do you want to say say something about that and what we wanted to bring back here? I could try to summarize the ideas um, that we came up with. And I think it's extended beyond just the Affordable Housing Trust Fund. I think mm -hmm. um, a couple of things came out. I mean, first of all, I mean, the trust fund is still something we, we want to push with um, our city officials. Um, and uh, I think the, it, the cut to the chase and what we think is the next step really was that we thought about having the mayor come back to her, uh, I can't remember when she was last year, uh, maybe shortly after she was elected, but it's been, been more than a year now. Um, and to kind of not, I don't, I don't put it bluntly, to kind of put her on the spot as to her position on certain things that we've been working on, including the Affordable Housing Trust Fund, but also things like the... Um, as you all are aware, there's legislation now that's been filed to allow uh, 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 to add a tax on sales of over a million. And we've been talking about that as a local preference here. Um, and that would be neat. And if we raised money that way, we'd need a place to put it. Um, there's also the issue of the realtor fees um, for uh, that are being charged to prospective tenants as well. It's an issue we haven't lost. We still want to keep that on the radar. A few other things. But so that um, 
that that's one of the things that we we want to bring back to you is to sort of figure out when that might happen and what the agenda would be for her to come to, you know have a, want to have a very firm sense of what it is we want to bring forward to her but those were some of the some of the things that we've been working on i might have missed something you can someone else can jump in if i've left anything off that um, but the other the idea that we came up is a way to maybe build some support for uh, funding the trust, which already exists, um, is to thought about having a, a convening a meeting of developers sometime maybe in the winter, um, where we would, uh, it would be an informational session to understand what are the barriers to um, being able to build housing. Um, and we thought out of, we, we were thinking that out of that might come, um, you know, there might, uh, might come uh, support for having this pool of money that could be available um, that would have a quicker turnaround than just the CPA. Um, and we did something like this. I don't know, Richard, you might have been around when we did this, but I remember doing this in the art gallery right on Main Street some years ago. We had a pretty good turnout, but this is going back maybe 10 years now, almost 10 years where we brought develop developers in to, to, to hear from the city about um, you know, it was, it was mostly to hear to hear from the city about what the city's needs are, but also to hear what the developers' needs are. But we could sort of frame it any way we want, um, and that would be like a, an open community meeting. Um, so those were the sort of the two big ideas: bringing the mayor back and having this um, this open forum um, or symposium was a word that we threw around for developers. Um, uh, and we thought that, that for the symposium, we would make it we would make it regional. That wouldn't just be us doing it. We might invite invite East Hampton or Amherst or other surrounding communities to be part of this because we recognize, you know, that developers are interested maybe in the larger Pioneer Valley, not just Northampton, and they might have an interest in co-sponsoring this with us. <clears throat> Yeah, I think that um, that summarizes it well. And I think the other point that we were talking about was that um, developers can very likely provide information that might be helpful to us in our endeavor to, you know, to raise up the, the Municipal Housing Trust Fund again. Um, because we expect that they might say that there are, are money issues, right? And um, also we discussed the governor's bond bill, huge bond bill that's um, come that she's proposed has to go through the legislature that would include a transfer tax. Ace, you probably read about this, right? But a transfer tax, um, uh, uh, for every community that that uh, wants to do that, and then you know, the question is, where would that money go? And um, we talked in our subcommittee about building, just building some some arguments or kind of layering some thoughts around um, why the municipal housing affordable trust fund might be well suited to be revived with all of these issues. I also think. It would be great to invite the mayor to get her thoughts on this. I know Keith, you'd said last time that she wants a proposal, but I think it's very reasonable for us to ask her to come and speak with us and to ex for an exchange of ideas, right? Not what she wants, but for an exchange of ideas where the city is and the direction that we can go in um, in terms of the city planning. Is that what she had her response so far has been? She wants something more concrete to react to? Is that what we're hearing? Well, well, I think that's that's essentially what you said, Keith, right? Uh, I mean, that is correct. Uh, you know, the way I interpret, um, you know, she, uh, I mean, I think she's more than happy to have a conversation. I think uh, the last conversation we had was quite fruitful. Um, but, you know, um, as an advisory committee, you know, I think uh, there's also something about, you know, advising and having a proposal, but I think conversation is fine. I think it's totally, um, totally reasonable. Ace? 
in the last conversation that I had with the mayor's office, along with um, Councilors Mayori and Jarrett, this was over the summer, um, the, the messaging that we got from that was still the city doesn't want to do it because of the administrative costs and doesn't see what benefit it would provide that CPNA funding doesn't already. Um, has the subcommittee come up with answer to those to those questions that we want to propose to the mayor um no but the subcommittee did consider that that argument and um um gordon i think you said this during the subcommittee meeting that it would be good to proceed to gather more information and um gather some um some you know information especially from developers etc right um in order to um bolster our our uh wish that we could um elevate the housing trust fund so in other words yes that's been the reaction but what else can we do in the current environment to um get our argument together, right? I mean, I think it's going to be more effective if we can answer their arguments of, you know, what the need is, what the benefit is. Uh, so, you know, talking with developers, if they come back with the answer that either CPA is too slow or insufficient or et cetera, would be a good counter to that. But if they don't, what's what what are you know other ways that the housing trust fund is you know necessary Let's see richard's got his richard has yeah. his hand. uh i seem to recall there was some discussion about alternative ways to staff a cpa and is that considered viable or not you so mean the, the trust city yeah uh, for excuse me uh for AHT, Affordable Housing Trust, um, mm -hmm. staffed outside of city staffing so that um, it doesn't, that burden argument can get set aside. Yeah, I mean, one, I mean, there are communities that have this and they're doing it. And so if there's administrative costs, it, it would be wonderful to find out how they're paying for those. And two, I wonder. I, I I wonder if this is sort of a red herring on the part of the city. Is it really that expensive? Is there really that much of an administrative burden to take this on? How much work is really involved? And it's a bank account ultimately. And mm -hmm. then you make decisions, and the trustees make decisions on how to spend it. Um, but you know, it's someone just have to watch. You know, manage the books, I guess. Um, but I wonder how much real costs it will incur to run it. <clears throat> I mean, if it is a red herring argument, then we need to find out what the actual reasoning behind why we've been told no so many times is. And I think that that, that sort of came up in our subcommittee meeting in the sense that, um, uh, Gordon, I think when we talked about inviting developers to, to, you know, regionally to let us know what is standing, you know, what is their opinion about what's standing in the way of developing more affordable housing. So building up our own, our own um, um, knowledge base about from, from them directly from that source about what's standing in the way. So yeah, we had discussed that resistance and I don't think that we can um, tackle the resistance by simply saying, well, we think this, we think this is a necessary idea. I think we have to go to the base and say, tell us what you think is standing in the way. And then just kind of amass our, our um, knowledge from there and um, just continue to offer that to the city. I don't know if we'll be successful, but this is one thing we can do. Spencer? Um, well, the only thing I would add to all of that, um, and I think it's all great, is that, ironically enough, my, my, my legal experience is in trusts and in estate planning. Um, and I think 
what came to my mind is when I talk to clients about trusts is what I always tell them is that they're tools and they're only as good for the job you're descri- you want them to do. Um, and so to Ace's point, you know, I think that, you know, I, I, we got to show them the function of what it's going to achieve, whether yeah. that's we can respond more nimbly to development projects and we don't have to deal with some overriding bureaucracy or whatever it is. I think from a purely administrative cost standpoint, like Gordon was saying, it's just a bank account. Whether or not you have to pay the people to the trustees or not, it's an open question. And I would imagine that there would be some type of duty to account for all the funds and the expenditures, but that should be pretty straightforward. But I, I do think we have to be a bit more not that I try to con clients into making trusts, but, you know, you have to kind of describe, you know, it's not somebody's, you know, when it's not what we've got, you've got to explain why it's going to make things better uh, is my only two cents on the matter. So what you were saying, Spencer, was we need to gather our information and our thoughts about this in order to present to the city how the municipal housing trust fund could make things better. Right. And I think like you were saying, Carmen, you know, if we talk and Richard was saying, if we talk to the developers, you know, it, to take it out of the theoretical, right, we're, we're yeah. operating in theory and that this is going to be great. Well, why? Right. Every, and, and if it's that, you know, I could imagine an argument would be like, listen, our housing stock and buildable lots in this city is effectively at zero. Um, and we need to be able to if we've got a project that we want to execute on, we need to do it in a a business time frame and not a governmental time frame. Mm-hmm. And that might be the reason for the trust and that it can operate a little more closer to a commercial reality than having to go through the rigmaroles of city government and maybe mm-hmm. using opportunities. Mm-hmm. But I do think having developers tell us that, I mean, I think, I I can't imagine they're not going to tell us that, but I I think, you know, being able to point to that is going to go a long way. Yeah. So, I mean, at this point, I want to ask you, Laura, did you have any, any thoughts about this? She's still here or not? Okay, we can go back to her later. So, can you see me? Yes. I just, I noticed Edgardo has his hand up, so I wanted to defer to him. Oh, okay. Ed, Edgar? Uh, yeah. Uh, thank you, Laura. Um, I was just um, looking up for, because because we have um, <clears throat> come up with uh, uh, a lot of answers to these things in the subcommittee and our earlier subcommittee meetings and I thought we did a little presentation for the uh, for the housing partnership. I don't recall, but I do have our minutes that I can uh, forward to folks. But just to mention a few of the things um, that um, uh, that we are that some of the reasons we talked about the benefits for having the trust fund is that uh, it wouldn't be bound by a predetermined funding cycle uh, like uh, CPA is. You know, we could provide emergency funding or funding that's not anticipated. Um, we talked about the project, the Hampshire Heights Playground project being a great example of, of uh, something that uh, could be um, uh, funded by the uh, by the Housing Trust Fund. Um, we talked about gap funding um, and we talked about how other, so many other municipalities in the state uh, work uh, in collaboration with uh, CPA. Um, and there's a number of other things that um, we have uh, for, you know, for answering those questions that actually make a lot of sense. So um, just wanted to share those things. Thank, thank you, Edgar. So some of the things I had mentioned at the last meeting as being kind of advantageous about a trust is to do with timing. Um, also to do with the fact that the trust 
the the housing partnership could request CPA money and kind of stockpile it over the years because the projects come along and then they need a lot of money. Um, and then they're competing with all the other kind of good CPA things like pickleball this year. <laughs> we're, <going to> win. <laughs> we're not going to win that one. <laughs> so, um, oh my so, God. But I think, That's a good one, Laura. But I That's think a good that, one. <laughs> but I think not that we, not that it's a contest, um, <laughs> but I think the game changer is if there are other sources um, like a transfer tax like uh, short-term rental fees, other sources that become available that could be funneled through the trust. Um, because timing, um, getting money when you need it is important, but also we're just it, scrambling uphill against the escalation in cost. And so mm -hmm. it, it's that. I feel like I've seen the Amherst um, Trust use CPA money for staffing its own uh, activities. I've seen them use it for uh, a little bit of feasibility, site feasibility work for its own activities. I mean, the city went in just this CPA round, right, Keith, for what seems like some site feasibility work associated with a city-owned parcel. And that's through CPA. So it's kind of, it, it, it's a good tool for that. Um, I feel like with, um, you know, Northampton used to have a very, a quite dedicated planning department staffer, Peg Keller, who was really kind of tuned into housing and shelter issues. And I feel like that function has gotten a little bit dispersed within the planning department as it stands now. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I feel that could be a loss with really kind of effectively kind of catalyzing affordable housing work in the city. Um, I think there's, again, I think there's a lot of answers to these questions, um, but were you to have a trust that had significant resources, that had a dedicated staffer, it would change the character of how proactive the this group could be. Um, mm -hmm. The other person who was hugely proactive was was Wayne Fiden, also not no longer with the city. So I am anticipating just with the redeveloped Main Street and all the other things that are happening in Northampton that are awesome, there may not be the dedicated staff that we've seen in the past for affordable housing work. So just flag that um, as a concern that I have. No mm -hmm. offense, Keith. I think Keith's job has expanded since he took over Peg Keller's position into a variety of other uh, areas so yeah that's correct things have changed Some of that stuff was handed off yeah. yeah for sure yeah okay so back to the subcommittee meeting so we we ended that meeting correct me if i'm wrong edgar and gordon with um the um kind of that we all thought it was a good idea to have a developer meeting um, that was regional rather than just Northampton, since it's just a regional, it's not, this is a regional problem, in order to get their feedback on what, what is standing in the way, what they think, what are the barriers, what are the barriers? And I think we're in a position now to gather more information on that to maybe plan such a meeting. I mean, when we were in our subcommittee meeting, we thought, well, couldn't happen until the spring. I mean, I'm like hoping, hoping maybe earlier than that, late winter, February, I don't know. Um, and just become the repository of this information that we can, you know, um, assemble and then, um, uh, kind of present. I I don't think it's too soon to invite the mayor though before that if she can come to ask about her thoughts about this. I don't know if that's going to happen. Um, one, one thing we can do, Ace, 
Regarding getting the mayor's thoughts on this, would it be more time effective to, for example, send her an official email asking her for a statement or similar so she could just give it and we could then react to it that way rather than waiting on her schedule to clear? That's a, a super interesting idea. What do you think, Keith? Yeah, I mean, sometimes talking extemporaneously without um, information, uh, I mean, I think that's perfectly reasonable um, to do that as well, you know. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just December shot prob uh, and uh, probably, and so you're looking at maybe January or February, um, I think uh, email might be more expedient. Mm hmm The email would say something like, this is the direction the housing partnership is going. This is what we'd like to pursue. We'd like your thoughts on this and any other thoughts you have about the direction the city of Northampton is taking around this issue. Something like that. I mean, that could be part of the invitation saying we'd like you to come meet with us and then setting the agenda and she can have that way she has some ideas about what we're going to be discussing i don't know but i guess maybe if you were taking it a step further you wanted to see her commit in writing and not just come and be pre present orally what she thought what her thoughts were is that the difference um, <clears throat> i'm not necessarily but i think ace you're you're presenting a different way to to ask her and to invite her and how she chooses to respond in writing or coming into us or saying, I don't know right now, that's that's up to her. But, uh, but I think it's a good idea for us to write her a letter um, considering all that's going on in Northampton. I'm sure she's extremely busy saying this is what we're thinking about and seeing how she responds, then we'll have to wait and see. We'd like to invite you to a meeting or we invite your response to our to our direction. Does that sound viable? I'm happy to write such, 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 such a letter to her. Does that sound viable? And if I, does, that does sound viable, um, Keith, would that go through you or how would how would that be done? I'd like some feedback on that. Uh, you can send it to her or, or to me, that's fine. Okay. Uh, I'd like to motion in support of making this meeting and email, yes. Okay. Um, so a second, um, and um, I would, um, I think it might be a good idea to list some of the research that we did, some of our uh, benefits that we that we found uh, through mm -hmm. our research in our subcommittee, and just to kind of give her um, some some background of what, about what, where we're coming from. Edgar, would it make sense for you and me to get together to write this letter as chair and co-chair of this um, committee? Yeah, I mean, I think anybody, any of us can do it. Whoever's available or willing. Okay. Just to clarify, what we're sending her is a list of our 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 the concepts that we have that we'd like the city to her to respond to. Are we also in that same communication and asking her to attend one of our meetings in this winter, this coming winter, as well, or is it two separate things? Um, I think that they could both go in one. Mm -hmm. One would be a summary and a list, or sort of a summary of where we are, right? And the other would be, we'd love to see you at a meeting. Would you be able to come this winter? You know. Right. We could put out either January, February. January would be the second Monday since the first is the first Monday. So Correct. But right. January 8th or the, whatever the February Monday is. Um, right. um, I like this idea though, that you have Ace of first writing her and kind of setting a setting a structure, setting a tone, right? Not necessarily an agenda, but setting a structure and, a, and 
and atone for what we're doing. And then of course, inviting her either to come to see us or to respond to us in another way. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, Carmen, just to follow up, uh, there is a motion on the floor um, to write yeah. this letter. Uh, we haven't voted on it, but there is a motion. And seconded. Yes, yeah. yeah. so there's a motion and it was seconded. Gordon, do you want to say something? No, I was just going to say, I think the issue of like where what we're voting on is we're author we as the partnership are authorizing you, Carmen, and, and any deputies, it could be it got it could be anybody to draft something. Um so, so we're trusting you are alternatively what we could do is you could draft it and then we could review it at the December meeting and then it would go right, right after that. That still gives her a month. Um, right. As a way for if you want input from the full membership. Right. That's what I'm that's what I'm tempted to do. I mean, it's only a short four weeks away. We have a holiday. So I think to get a really good draft together and then present at the December meeting, I think would be the way to go. So anyway, we should vote. Do people agree? Spencer, what do you think? I think that's a great idea. And I, I think it's it also, you know, keeps things moving, which is always nice. Yes. Ace, it was your idea. Do you still agree with it? <laughs> uh, yes, and uh, if we're doing things very by the book, I accept the friendly amendment of bringing it back here for us to review it at the December meeting. For sure. Melissa? Yep, I think it's a good idea. Edgar? Yes. Gordon? Yep. And um, I think the person I'm not seeing is and Richard. Yes. Excellent. Um, so I'm going to take the responsibility of drafting that. And um, I think Edgar and Hannah can provide some input there and maybe you, Gordon, as well. And then we'll bring it back to the December meeting. Sound good? All right. Um, let's see, I see we have a couple of other people besides Laura who are here with us on from the public. Um, do either of you want to say anything or are you here to listen? Stella and Yang Yang. Hi there, I'm Stella. We're just here to listen. We're currently in a journalism class at Smith College and we're hoping to gain some insight on current affordability actions happening in Northampton. So great. Thanks. Okay, welcome. Yeah, we're so glad oh, you're here. <laughs> yeah. Yay. All right, thanks. Okay, so we're actually on other business not anticipated then since we finished that. Anybody else have anything else? No. Ace has her hand up. Ace. Um, yeah, so touched on briefly before was um, Bill H. 1375, an act to prohibit landlords and brokers from requiring brokers commissions to be paid by a tenant or prospective tenant, which is currently in the legislature. Uh, it like the last motion that actually happened on it in June, um, given that the legislative session is going to be ending soon. Um, Assuming it gets pulled forward into next session, the bill number is going to change again. So if anyone is following that specific bill, it is going to appear to be closed. Um, but as long as um, as long as uh, Sabados and Comerford bring it forward again, it won't actually be done, but it'll go through the cycle as it did at the start of this year. Um, Brockton has a similar bill that is in a similar position to ours. And I mean, you know, the mayor's big bond bill included, right, uh, a um, a um, new proposal on the committees to do that. So that has yet to go through all the legislature. That could individual communities. Now you all, I don't know if you can hear me, but you all are totally frozen. You are too. <laughs> you are too, and you're breaking in and out. Can anybody hear me? Yes. Yeah, we can hear you. You're just frozen.
Now we can't hear you at all. Edgardo, you might need to take over. <laughs> you still there, Carmen? I think uh, there she is. All right, now you're muted. Now you can unmute yourself, Carmen. Oh, technical difficulties. No? Okay. Um, I hate to uh, have her not finish her sentence, <laughs> but I think we're really at, at the at the end of our meeting here. There was okay, no there we go. I think I'm unmuted, right? I think I'm yes. unmuted. Okay. So just know, this isn't what I was saying, but just know, Edgar, and Hannah too, that I will be in touch with you and we'll collaborate around this um, around this letter and then we'll bring it back to the December meeting. Yeah. All right. Anybody else have any business? Heretofore unexplained? Mute it again. Yeah, I move that we adjourn. It looks like we've uh, uh, done our stuff, but I'd like to wish everyone a, a happy Thanksgiving and holiday. Thank you, Richard. Thank you. Anybody want to second that? <laughs> I'll second that motion. <laughs> I'll, I'll triple it. <laughs>